Hello, Jessica Frost Ballas here with a video for Chibitronics. Today we're continuing our video series, Chibitronics for Paper Crafters, and I'm sharing how to use animating LEDs to illuminate your die cut images. So let's get started. When you push on the sentiment, you'll see the LEDs fade in and out of the center of the card and the moth's bodies, creating a soft halo effect. If this is your first time working with Chibitronics, I encourage you to go back and start with the first video in the series to learn the fundamentals of creating paper circuits. Today I'm using the gorgeous Mystic Moth Inlay Die from Concord and Ninth, and I die cut it from light gray, white, pink, peach, gold glitter, aqua, and teal cardstock. I save all the little pieces to create my inlay designs. But first it's time to sketch out my circuit. I start by placing one of the background die cut pieces over an A2 panel of white cardstock and trace around the moths in the center shape. Next, I use the soon to be released Chibi stencil to trace the heart outline of the white fade animating LEDs over the head of each moth and the center of the panel. I keep the long positive side of the sticker closest to each corner of the panel. Then I sketch out my circuit. I note my positive sides and negative points for reference, and then sketch where I'll be placing my conductive fabric tape. The center LED will be one circuit, and the corner LEDs will be a second parallel circuit that will all connect to the same battery. Because of the intricacy of the inlay panel, I decide to put my battery holder on the back of the panel to get it out of the way. So I draw lines running from the center LED to the back of my panel. Then I map out my second circuit for the corner LEDs. I remove the adhesive backing from my battery holder and adhere it upside down on the back of my panel. Then I continue tracing my lines to connect to the colored reference lines in the battery holder. Here I trace my positive lines in red and my negative lines in blue to make it easier to see. You'll notice that the two blue negative lines overlap each other and the two red positive lines also overlap each other. It's okay to overlap the tape as long as you don't cross the positive and negative lines. And here's where I made things a little harder for myself and I'd recommend doing what I say here, not what I did. Before creating my circuit, I add ATG adhesive all across the top of the panel. I did this because I thought it would make it easier to add my inlay pieces later. But I forgot that I'd need to run my conductive fabric tape onto the back of the panel, which was difficult when I couldn't actually turn the panel over without it sticking to my work surface. I highly recommend not adding HG tape to the front of the panel. Then I lay down my lines of conductive fabric tape following the red and blue lines I drew in for reference. Adding the ATG adhesive to the whole panel also makes it a little more difficult to lay down the fabric tape which is another reason I don't recommend doing that. When I get to the place where the tape will continue on to the back of the panel, I just cut the tape, leaving a little excess tail for the other side.
Once I'm done applying all of my tape lines, I have four little tails of tape to add to the back of the panel later. Next, I adhere my white fade animating LED stickers following the outlines I traced earlier. Make sure that the large positive side of the heart-shaped sticker covers the positive line of tape and the negative point of the sticker covers the negative line of tape. I apply all five stickers and then add some scraps of fabric tape over the top and bottom of each sticker to reinforce them and make sure they won't shift. I've used some low-tack post-it note tape to draft out the layout of the various colors for the inlay design. I carefully peel up the outline piece and adhere it over my circuit panel to create a guide for my inlay design. Now that there's a cardstock layer above the ATG adhesive, creating a little bit of a buffer, I can turn over the panel and finish creating my circuits. I continue my tape lines, making sure the positive lines follow the red line and the negative lines follow the blue. Once I finish adding my tape, I add the foam ring to the battery holder. Then I stick a 2016 coin cell battery positive side up inside the foam ring. When I close the battery holder and push, the circuit completes and you'll see those LEDs start to fade in and out. And now it's time for the fun inlay part. This takes a little while to do, so I recommend putting on your favorite show or podcast and just enjoying the process. For the most part, the HEG adhesive I applied earlier is enough for the large inlay pieces, but occasionally I have to add a little liquid glue to make sure that the smaller pieces will stick to my panel. At this point, I don't inlay the bodies of the moth or the centerpiece. I could place those leftover pieces directly over the LEDs, but I decide to give them a little height so that the LED has more room to shine. I add strips of foam mounting tape on the moth's body and the top and bottom of the centerpiece, making sure not to cover the LED stickers. Then I adhere the last pieces to my panel. When I finish that, I add a sentiment onto the panel that's placed pretty much right over where the battery holder is on the back of the panel. I apply foam tape across the back of the panel and then adhere that to a top folding card base to finish my card. And now you can see when I press on the sentiment, the LEDs light up and fade in and out. I like how the dimension gives the moths the appearance that they're glowing with halos of white light. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video in the Chibichonics for Paper Crafter series and stay tuned for a new video next month. Be sure to subscribe to the Chibitronics YouTube channel and follow us on social media for lots of crafty inspiration. Thanks so much for watching, have an amazing day, and happy crafting. Bye!